Hey everybody, today I'm talking about Meadow, which is a 2021 release board game designed by Clemens Kalicki and illustrated by Carolina Kayak. This one accommodates one to four players and takes 60 to 90 minutes to play. Towards the end of the game, the game is going to look like this. So I've just finished a two player game here where we have this big tableau of cards that I've played throughout. I've got my hand of cards. I've got these different location cards. And the main boards look like this, where you have this big grid of cards that you can collect with the little deck holders here, and which kind of shows where these cards refresh. You've got this main central board here as well, which just determines the uh, which round you're on and different ways you can get bonus points. So the idea of this game is that we're trying to get as many points as we can by playing these different wildlife cards, all these different landscapes or different trees and stuff. Um, and as you can see, each of these cards has a, uh, has a number on them with these leaves, which determines the points they're going to be worth at the end of the game. But you'd also see that these cards have different um, symbols on them. So this symbol here in this kind of triangle symbol means that in order to play this card, I need to have these prerequisites showing on my tableau of cards. And this is the, uh, the new one that is gonna show once that's cards play, which is going to count towards a future prerequisite. So as you can see here, I need a tree, uh, a, a grass, and one of these rolling hills. And um, I've got a tree, I've got some grass, and I've got one of these rolling hills. Therefore, I could play this card on any of those different stacks. So the uh, one of the other key mechanisms on how you're actually going to acquire these cards is based on these different player pieces here. These different like pointing, uh, these pointing cardboard tokens. Now you're going to start with either four or five of these, depending on the player count. So in a two-player game, you're going to have five numbered from one to four, and then a wild one which looks a bit like this. And again, these have two bits of information on them. So the number is important, but also the bottom bottom symbol here is important for two different reasons. So the uh, the upper symbol is a bit easier on how to understand, and that's gonna be how you acquire cards from this grid. So as you can see, I've got the four here, and I could plug this one into any of these different notches on the board, uh, as long as it's not taken. As you can see, these ones are already locked out, so I couldn't go to those spots. But if I went here, for example, I would because it's my four, I go one, two, three, four, and I would take this card here. And that applies to all the different numbers. The wild means that you can take any from that row or column, so it gives you a lot more flexibility. Now the other side, which is that kind of squared off side, is also important relating to this side of the board here. So let's say for example, I plug this um, number one into this notch here. And these all give you different abilities. So this one here means you can take any card from the grid, uh, kind of a, going around that normal restriction of the number. Uh, you've got ones here that let you play two cards at once. You've got ones here that give you these different kind of um, these row tokens, which are good for building these individual cards, which I'll explain a bit later. Uh, you've got th this one here that lets you draw a number of cards and then pick one and put the other ones back and things like that. So it gives you a nice little bonus power that you can use. As soon as you take a card using this method here, you're gonna acquire the card and you're gonna have the ability to either play that card straight into your tableau of cards, or you can even play one already in your hand. And when you play them onto your um, onto your tableau, you are not limited to how high they are, but you do have to start each stack with one of these foundation cards, which show all these different terrain types. Um, and additionally, if you ever choose to go to this side of the board here, and you know by using this side of your little markers, then you are going to have the ability not only for the um, not only the special ability here, but if you ever have a number of these symbols on show, for example, if I had this. Um, this kind of howling wolf symbol and this flying bird symbol uh, showing on this on the tableau like I have here. So I've got the wolf, I've got the um, I've got the uh, the flying bird. Then as a bonus follow up action, I can play one of these tokens here, um, starting from the lowest one, which is a two, uh, and play them between the two symbols that I've got on show for some bonus points. And that's a adds a little bit of a race element where you want to be the first to build these particular symbols and um, get that kind of adjacency bonus by getting your marker down there and beating your opponent to the punch. These location cards work in a very similar system where you must have at least one of these um, free road tokens and you can acquire more of those if you run out by using the special ability on one of your player tokens like this. And you're gonna add them just above your normal tableau of cards. And when you do that, you're gonna acquire these kind of location cards as the normal method. And you can play them just as you would a normal card as long as you are abiding by those prerequisites. 
to get some bonus points. And additionally, if you ever acquire some of these item cards, uh, you can play them on top of these location cards for some bonus points, um, which are kind of depicted by these kind of suitcase uh, symbol. And again, that's just another kind of route you can go down and get you more bonus points. And that's pretty much how the game's gonna play out. You're gonna play for a number of rounds depending on the player count. So in a two player game, you'll play six rounds. Halfway through the game, the deck is gonna change from the south deck to the north deck and um, where things are going to ramp up slightly and the cards are going to be slightly more difficult to play because of course you've already acquired quite a few cards by then. So as you can see from the demo there the actual mechanisms of this game are rather simple. You're either going to acquire a card by playing one of these tokens and then playing one uh, in front of you uh, or you're going to use the special ability on that token on the reverse, reverse side and plug it into that main board to take that bonus action. Um, I suppose the decisions really come on the back of this symbol mechanism or these symbols. Um, it's almost like, a, almost like a technology tree where each of these cards you play has a prerequisite on them. They're going to go up and up and up starting from real basic um, abilities like I have here for example. You know, this one, this bird card only needs a tree and a bug. And then by the end of it, you know, you need a house, a tree, uh, a frog or a bird and a bug. And um, it basically just builds a ton on top of each other, one after another, um, getting more and more difficult cards to play, which of course is going to get you bigger points in return. However, I suppose the trick of this game and what can leave you uh, kind of milling over your mistakes is the fact that when you play a card, you do have to cover up an existing card which you might need in the future. So it's all about having the most symbols on show at any time. And because there are so many symbols, having all of them on show isn't really gonna be an option. So yeah, it's all about planning ahead, which order you're gonna do things in, uh, how are you gonna acquire these cards, You know, which ones you're gonna prioritize, because of course, all the players are sharing the same grid, playing their tokens down, blocking off spots, and um, of course, Again, you are limited by the numbers on these tokens as well. So, you know, if you if you really need, need this card here, somebody's already played here, and um, you haven't got your four left to go here, then, you know, you're all out of luck unless maybe you can have your wild card token or even use the special ability here, for example, to take any card in the grid. But everyone's playing from the same game. Everyone is kind of clogging up the main board, uh, beating you to the punch, and I'm uh, stopping you getting exactly what you want, whether that's de deliberately or kind of indirectly, it's gonna happen. I do enjoy how you can plan at least a few turns in advance. You know, for example, if you really need a difficult card to play, like like this, um, you know, this crow symbol, for example, um, I could say, look, I, I'm two symbols short here, I'm gonna build this card for cheap, and then I'll build another one for cheap, and then by the time I get round for that, I'll be able to smash this one down and then line up more and more moves. So I do like you can string things ahead of time and you're not just reacting to the current board state. However, again, you are restricted to the cards available to you, and there is that kind of tension of getting the cards you want. You are also given a little bit of flexibility in terms of uh, playing these cards down. So for example, this house here needs a, a bug, a bird, and a house symbol. I have the bug and the bird, but I don't have the house symbol. However, I can choose to kind of proxy that symbol by getting rid of two cards that I might not be looking to use. So I could discard those, for example, and then build one of these cards to acquire more points. Uh, you'll also see that some of these symbols here have these restrictions on, which means they need to be next to that certain type of symbol, or at least one of those symbols. Um, so you've got more restrictions to abide by there, which is of course gonna ramp up that puzzle. That tiny element of player interaction in terms of the race to get to these certain symbols is a welcome addition in my opinion. It just adds a fraction of tension to the game, which um, of course gives you a nice foundation to, and gives you something to build towards uh, prior to starting the game. So it gives you a nice little path to follow. These little to these little um, cards here in terms of these landscapes and items you pick up, they work just the same as these other cards do. Um, but I, I kind of like the fact that you need to almost forsake a turn by getting rid of your number two token in order to actually acquire these road tokens in the first place so you can play more cards. Because you will find yourself some point in the game, you know, wanting to acquire one of these nice juicy cards, however you haven't, however you, however you haven't got the actual space to build into. So a very small deviation from the actual main mechanisms or the, the kind of core of the gameplay, but it just adds a nice little 5% extra for you to have to think about. 
Despite being subject to the cards available to you, I think that generally the game is well balanced because there is a plethora of cards out here. You know, there's not just like there's a there's a kind of a set of three cards out there that you need to choose from. You are you have a lot of flexibility and a lot of different paths to go down. And if you can't acquire a certain card that you need, you can of course just divert your strategy and try something else. But of course, um, you know, you're always going to have that flexibility of discarding cards that you need to match a certain symbol as well. And I don't really think luck is as big as a factor in this game as you might think. Now, despite being a moderately simple game and a straightforward game, uh, Meadow does take 60 to 90 minutes to play. And I will say, in all honesty, that feels a little bit long for me. Um, because, again, you are doing the same thing from start to finish. Yes, halfway through the game, you know, the cards do ramp up a lot, getting more points and, um, you know, sometimes giving you two symbols as a reward. So it does have a slight kind of forward momentum and a different feel once it hits that halfway mark. However, it's not massive and it does feel like the game does go on maybe a round or two too long. So I would have liked to have seen it fit around more of that 45 minutes to an hour mark rather than that 60 to 90 minute mark. It just outstayed its welcome slightly too long for me especially considering how simple the game is. I think if there was one extra mechanism in the game, something else to think about and to stretch you in a different direction, I think that time could be warranted. However, as it stands, it's just a little bit too long. The replayability of Meadow is okay. It's more of a reactionary style game where, of course, you can plan a few turns in advance, but you're not going to go in from game to game trying a completely different path of strategy and a different route to victory. You know, you're always going to be reacting to what's on the board, which cards are in your hand, and how they're going to string together to get the most points down. Um, but I do find that these kind of reactionary, more tactical games do hold up a bit better in terms of um, playing them again and again. But it kind of falls back onto that, that factor that it does stay a little bit too long on the table. So if I want a more tactical game, I tend to lean to something a bit shorter. Um, but I, it's not too bad. You know, there's certain things to try, certain different routes to go. And of course, um, from game to game, these different symbols are going to change and give you something else to build towards. I think something that goes without saying is how gorgeous this game is. The artwork on all these animals and trees... Uh, wildlife it just looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, some of these illustrations and artwork is just so charming. It really is um, a feast for the senses in terms of what you're looking at here. It all just looks so homely and just so welcoming. And I think when a game has this level of um, aesthetic beauty, it's going to certainly um, iron out a lot of creases and almost lay out that drawbridge for people to jump into the hobby and um, you know that's something I cannot take away from Meadow just the visual aspect alone is going to inject a lot of life into this game the components themselves in terms of their quality is decent you have got these smaller cards but that's okay because you know you are building quite a lot of them in front of you at any time and if you have too big of the cards they're going to um, take up too much space um, all the cardboard stock is, is fine and you do get these um, little card holders to, um, to put the different decks in and while you might think that's a bit superfluous, a bit unnecessary, they do actually do a good job of making the gameplay go quicker because you know as soon as you take one of these cards you are going to replenish them instantly and because these are on a slight incline they're very nice and easy to draw out and replenish those cards with uh, kind of just to iron out that fiddliness. So yeah from a production standpoint no complaints whatsoever absolutely gorgeous and I'm just top notch. And I suppose that ties into the theme of the game. Now, of course, the theme here is a meadow. You know, you're building all these different things for wildlife and stuff. Um, however, I just want to quickly mention something that my girlfriend mentioned when we played this was that the, although the card artwork is, is stunningly beautiful to look at, there is no flavor text whatsoever. So rather than a game, say, like a Wingspan, where all the little flavor text and little tidbits in terms of, in terms of um, little bits of information, etc., they are not on the cards in this game. You actually have an index instead where you can reference the cards and find out a little bit of information about all these different animals and plants, etc. Now, I personally would have liked to have seen that on the cards. And while that's not a big factor for me personally, um, it is something my girlfriend mentioned. And it's because something that she said she liked about Wingspan was the fact that when you play the game, you can actually learn little bits of information about it. Whereas this one, you can't. I can't really see anybody playing a card and then looking straight into the card index and saying, oh, you know what, this uh, this is a certain hedgehog that does this. So it's just those little minor details that might not seem a big deal to us gamers are surprisingly important to people who aren't so much into the hobby and do play games for the theme. So just something to consider there that did um, pop up when I played this one. 
The game does scale pretty well, although you always use the same central board here. Um, at the higher player count, you do actually remove these wildcard tokens. So there are, of course, fewer, fewer tokens being used from round to round. Um, obviously, these boards here are double-sided, which determines the amount of rounds you take. And more of these different symbols are added in depending on the player count. And even some of these things are blocked off to restrict the amount of people who can go there to snatch those spots. So a very small tinkering in terms of the scalability here, but it does work perfectly fine. Uh, the game does have a solo mode. However, I have not played that solo mode, so I can't testify on the strength of it. So overall, Meadow is a lovely game. I think this is a nice, relaxing change of pace from the normal stuff I play. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward in what you're doing and you can pretty deterministically plan a few turns ahead, especially if you are quite a seasoned gamer. However, because there is a decent amount of interaction here on people snatching spots that you want, you will have to find yourself adjusting and you can't just stick to a certain game plan because, again, the other people are always interfering with your plans whether you want them to or not. Um, there, of course, there is a other little interaction here in terms of racing to the certain spots. So. I think without these different things, it could have been a bit too straightforward and a bit too kind of default play and just, you know, just go through the motions and get these cards played. But because you can't just play the ones you want all the time, then it is going to add a bit more flavor and a bit more life into this one. Um, it does have that certain element of a tech tree, which you are, you might be familiar with. You know, a lot of kind of more Euro style games, but this one kind of hides that under a bit of a veil by playing all these different cards, which, you know, rather than gaining alien technology, etc., you're just kind of getting the habitats etc for these animals which kind of it, it kind of masks what this game's about and it's going to really uh kind of teach non-gamers some pretty interesting decisions and it's going to make them force or at least if they want to win the game it could make them force them to play a bit more strategically and plan a few turns in advance which normally these kind of games don't do so i do like the fact that you can play things um, in a certain order to get the most mileage out of your cards and that will actually make you think in lots of different directions and I actually did find myself thinking you know, what am I going to do I want to do this but I forgot what I was going to do and map out my turns how am I going to use these tokens in the best order am I willing to uh, give up one of these or taking a card in order to take one of these bonuses in order to race for one of these tokens but bearing in mind that you know are the other people going for those ones as well and are they going to beat me to it so there is a decent amount of choice here and a decent amount of planning and foresight that has to go into doing well at this game. Now, I, again, I'm not going to breeze over the fact that the game looks amazing. You know, this is going to be a big factor in how well this game does. And, you know, rightly so. You know, I, I don't see why, um, you know, a game shouldn't be rewarded for how much effort it puts into its production and artwork. So, yeah, I think on artwork alone, this is going to appeal to a lot of people. And um, I think it's certainly wonderful to look at. I don't think the gameplay is spectacular, however it is solid and it's going to give you enough to think about and keep you satisfied if you want to play this with uh, kind of less experienced gamers. It's going to have enough to satisfy you as well as not being too much for them to digest and to enjoy themselves. So yeah, overall this is a nice relaxing game and I think this would fit uh, a future list of kind of relaxing games quite well and um, I'm happy with it. So uh, that concludes my thoughts on Meadow. Certainly give this one a try if you want to bridge that gap for family weight gamers into that kind of gateway plus level because this one is certainly uh, has some legs to it. So that is Meadow. Uh, if you have enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos too. And for everyone else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye.